project in particular. It seems a very important part of the gallery project in particular. It seems to bring this stuff out of the people who show in this gallery. Um, there is a huge phenomenon today of artists who use architecture as subject matter in their art, which is different. That you know, and 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 I'm, I'm I'm struggling to understand what I think of as the stakes about that. But there was a there was an important moment in minimalism where this possibility was first uh, produced, and if you. Um, so the, the, the critics of that period made a very specific set of arguments about the plan and about architects working through plan, which is to say that they argued that in working through plan, the, the architect essentially no longer could function in um, the space of experience. And so that for, for the architect, the plan is a space of, let's say, it's a form of abstraction that is, um, yeah, un anti that sucks experience out of the universe itself. Whereas artists who don't draw in plan, or maybe are incapable of drawing in plan, are are forced therefore to grapple with bodies in space. Let's say. So, so here, we hop, here we are in a room with an excessive quantities of plans that organize nobody. <laughs> there are two ponies. Except us. <laughs> Except somehow we're contained in a world. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm trying to get my head around that. I don't yeah, totally I mean, get it. I think the lack of scale figure or lack of suggestion of people uh, was really important. <clears throat> when I was drawing. But that, if we were to say, are there choices of evaluating what could be in a drawing? Well, you know, are there rule sets that I'm applying to myself? Yeah, you know, no, no, no person. Uh, if I'm drawing a horse, uh, better not be readable. Uh, you know, maybe it kind of looks like a horse, but maybe it doesn't. Um, but I, I, I guess I wanted to suspend uh, program I have something to say. It's really interesting because I think what 80 to 90 percent of the people in this room are architects. So your eyes are trained to see particular plans. My background's not architecture, and I've brought in a few of my friends who are bankers, stay-at-home moms, teachers. You know, they look at this room and they see their I would say I counted 50 penises in the walls. There's some walls and there's boobs in the back. So it's interesting how how you guys see them as plans and walls and thickness, thickness of walls. But the, the, the dick in the plan yeah. is the oldest architect. <laughs> that's, that's exactly that. I mean, that that's exactly the issue that for people who are outside of architecture, the plan is, has always been not a, a Van Eyck playground, but as like a joke that's, that the architect is only the one in on, mm -hmm. and that there's a kind of you know, phallic yeah. power mm -hmm. invested in that fucking plan. <laughs> and so I mean, so this is a little, this is exactly kind of the, kind of the issue. So. So the, the close honors uh, kind of. Uh, yeah. By the way, that's a that's a really kind of uh, one criticism I receive a lot is that exactly that that people see a lot of cocks. <laughs> well, you know, once you, once you've gotten that criticism, I don't think you can blame it on their imagination. <laughs> you know? A cigar is not. A cigar after a certain moment, no? <laughs> but I think this is interesting because, um, just a little bit, if there's this sort of double interiority happening, one that's, you know, just the fact that we're in this sort of white room, and what it does to us as a super architectural thing, the fact that we were asked if this is a pillow talk, apparently, right? And so by sort of removing the chair, um, we're made 
smaller than we're the same thing, but there's this other sort of interiority of your dream, but also that we're all architects, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that we see this project in a different way. Um, so what, what's sort of interesting to me about uh, the fact that we're all sort of on the ground and in this room mm -hmm. is that it's, it's architectural, it has to do with how the body relates to the room, but also is sort of like a lot of your other work, where there's this ambiguous scale, and you sort of play with scale. Um, and so maybe another way to talk about the exhibit has to do with um, the way that you're playing with scale. Does it have to do more with the changing of the reading of the person? Like, are you infantilizing us? Or <laughs> does it have to do with the, the sort of changing of the reading of Can I make a quick kind of comment, rift on that? And also, I think what Sylvia, you're talking about as far as the, the artist who's taking kind of architectural rifts and then running with the work. And I think that kind of one thing that I'm seeing happening that's provocative, or at least like as, as an architect who does artwork, of where, like, where do we find our moments to kind of intervene and produce something? And I think that you know, this is a good example of scale where as one thing with an architectural background as architects, we have a certain level of confidence and a certain understanding of scale, where we can tackle scale in a way that I don't, I don't think that traditional artists are trained to do. And I think that as um, with architectural background and understanding of space, floor, wall, things that make the space, um, our ability to kind of holistically understand it and have the, I'd say, confidence to tackle scale, I think is, um, probably the most provocative thing that architects can bring to the table and let's say not not teach or show but bring something provocative to maybe someone who's traditionally trained in only art and I think that uh, I don't know I think that level in that like you 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 took over the space and you had the necessity and a need to maniacally take every inch possible and if this room was let's say three times as big five times as big you would have tried to take it over as well. And I think that those that character of being kind of confident of taking on scale is something that, uh, I don't know, I think that's uh, it's a provocative quality that you know, is, uh, is on your side. A quick question, being like one of the non-architects here. <laughs> <laughs> very hot and this stuff all the time. Um, and it's a lot of for for Jai and Jai. I see one of the other things the other she skated. So when you were putting this work together, did you originally have an intent to sell it or was that an intent later uh, maybe uh, brought up by uh, the galleries? Or me or yeah gallery. Me. Yeah, like when you were making the work, did you have an intent of like, yeah, you know, if I sell keys or I might sell it as a whole or was that like a discussion that you guys all came together and had later? We, we had a discussion. Uh, before you made the work? Before we made the work. Okay. We had a discussion, um, and this discussion was exactly that. You know, are, are you doing this uh, to push some ideas or are we also going to sell it? Mm -hmm. uh, and once that conversation was had, uh, <coughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think, I'm sorry, you silly? Yeah, I think silly is definitely very correct about the concept of saying like if you guys were intentional about selling it as one piece but then having being okay with piecemealing it out does it change the intent or the integrity and I definitely something I think you want to approach next time like as myself being a former art dealer yeah um, then also too like if you do have the intent of like actually selling the work uh, it, it, I don't know, it's, 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 I guess it's so different than architecture, it's just such a completely different thing that um, I find it interesting you guys are trying to cross the boundaries between art and architecture. It's, it's, it's really kind of cool and interesting. Uh, but yeah, that is cool that you, you thought about that before. I mean, that, is, that is a good question because when you do come into it being a commodity, uh -huh. uh, you know, it, it, it changes everything. But what you're saying also, maybe the design of the exhibition uh, set up a kind of infrastructure where it is readable that something is going to be sold. Yeah, because it's, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you do have the intent to sell, it does become a commodity. It's a little different than 
this cup. And I've had a lot of artist friends who disagree, but when the piece enters the commodity, you know, kind of venue, it gets, you know, the registrar gets it, it gets an ID number, it gets a sticker, it goes up on the wall, it gets cataloged like anything else, and it eventually goes on the shelf. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's something you do really have to consider if that's the intent. But, Yes. <laughs> well, maybe on that note, we could uh, exit that way. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I want to pick up on one thing, a concluding comment. Yes. I mean, or if you guys can co co conclude, but I guess I, I, um, uh, I, I think it would be, I think it's important to actually move away from the idea that there's an essential thing called architecture that has to do with scale and space. I don't think architects have any claim over that. I, I actually couldn't disagree with that uh, more. Um, I don't think that there's anything intrinsic to the canvas or to the line. or And honestly, I don't think there's anything intrinsic to the subject matter either. Um, I don't think that Rachel White Reed is an architect because she deals with uh, you know, architectural representation any more or less than, than, than you are. Um, I, I would say that today, it's important to think about ways of working, and I think architects who work in, in specific ways that uh, is both limiting and enabling. So when you started off, you, you when you started, you you thank somebody for making a model. So so to me, on some level, what makes this architecture is that there was a model made first, and that this isn't, and that there is a kind of process in its production, which is not. And, and I think a lot of you, the way you speak um, is in part to cover up that fact uh, with all of the poetics of the blah, blah, blah. There is a kind of, you know, the architect thinking ahead in a, and being, uh, going through the form of abstraction that is intrinsic to the process. So, uh, so I would say that, number one. The, the second thing that I would say is, is maybe the flip side of that um, which is that architects also um, work with other people. Um, uh, artists also work with other people, but they haven't, but they haven't integrated that fact very well. Um, right? they, they, for, for many artists, they've still, in their fantasy, they're alone in a room with a paintbrush or you know, some yeah. stupid thing like that. Um, whereas, whereas architects are like the frog in the Amazon, you know, they're first to suffer the ills of the collective nature of contemporary production. Um, and so I, I think that the, that, uh, which is not only that you have to thank people, no artist ever goes into their gallery space. You don't hear Jeff Koons thanking the guy that polished the bunny. You know, <laughs> I mean, never, ever, ever, right? So, so that is a very architectural thing to, to have as part of the presentation, the acknowledgement of this kind of collective system that, that we have. And whether it's clients or contractors or whatever, that, that's important. But, but I also honestly think on the, the idea that the object is not fixed um, means that architects also engage discourse in a different kind of way, which is to say they take criticism the work doesn't have to end with this object. It can continue to become other things. Um, and so rather than just have to treat this as the thing in and of itself, it's really very architectural to think of it as a work in progress and to think about what you would, you know, what additional directions you would take uh, next time and what you would cut out next time, et cetera. So, you know, I, I have three comments for you for your next room. Um, one is that I think it would be really interesting if you're going to continue the layering kind of thing is to have a sense of reactivity built into the way you've distributed the thing. So um, you know that old, that kids thing where you, I don't even remember how you do it, like you have a thing of milk and you put food coloring in and you drop, you drop a soap in it and it, it reacts to like the different viscosities of the surface reacts and the and the so I would want there to be some reactivity in the in the relationship of the two patterns. So I would say that given what you're doing, that would be a next step. I think that addressing the seam of the room is 
like yeah. it is a little inconsistent. I think that that would be a really interesting thing to do. And then my last comment to you is that I would really reconsider the Cox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's all I have. <laughs>